will uh, convene this meeting on June 27th at the Select Court in the town of Bakersfield. Uh, it is 7.04. Um, has everybody had a chance to read and review the minutes from the meeting from June 13th? I did. Yes. Uh, is anybody willing to uh, present a motion to accept those minutes? I would do that. Mr. Chairman, motion to accept the minutes from the eight state. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded that we accept the minutes from the June 13th meeting from the town of Bakersfield. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Be it noted that since I was absent for that meeting, uh, I am abstaining. But we have three. Three is a quorum. So passed. <clears throat> Reports and warrants are being passed around. John has them as we are discussing this. Um, finance. Have people had a chance to review the sheet that was provided by our <laughs> lovely treasurer? Uh -huh. You guys probably haven't, but I gave you guys all a copy of how much we owe for the female estate, along with yep. the amount of interest for the TAN loan for the last couple of years that Brenda had requested. That's what that extra sheet is for. Thank you for that additional information. Um, Matt has signed agreements. Uh, for the town to be paid approximately $170,000 from two of the multiple projects. Uh, that would be Waterville Mountain Road and the project known as 169693, which is gravel scattered from one end of the town to the other. But uh, that will be reimbursed to the tone of 90% from the uh, feds. Also, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of $150,000 for Whitney Road. Yeah, that's what okay. <laughs> so, Someday we'll get here. Someday we'll get here. Uh, that is Supposedly. in the last review step. Environmental. Yeah, the environmental review. Uh, the other project, the Go Path Bridge, which was bid at $593,000. Yeah, it came to six something total share. Okay. Yeah. They're uh, making progress on that. The footings are nearly set. Uh, once they're set and have reached design strength, they will start <coughs> with the uh, superstructure. Near as we can figure, we're going to come out okay on this. Time will tell. FEMA still has time to screw this up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Oh, you're okay. okay. I didn't have anything else, so unless okay. you guys have questions. Oh, um, actually, I do have one more thing. Next week, you will see direct tax because um, we're, we don't have to do a channel on this year uh, because we oh. had left over from last year. Oh. So, Bless you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so far, we don't have to. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to just take direct tax out of town and move it into road to cover the remaining, you know, two months before we get our our, ta our property taxes. Excellent. Thank so, you very yeah, much. That saves us that interest. Yep. Yes. Unfortunately, we're paying it on the fee loan. Right. <laughs> so, um, just a couple questions and, and a couple of links maybe we will answer. Right. You I might be able to answer. Let's see. Let's go with you first. <laughs> let's start with you. Brigham expense. Yep. Um, I, I see that we had a 
Almost seventeen thousand dollars in expense. What were we looking at there? I I'm not sure what the total is. I do know that we should be getting reimbursed for a lot of that. Correct. I have to file that report. It's got a thousand dollar deductible on it for insurance. Um, so we'll coordinate uh, tomorrow to get that done. So okay. that's from the building damage. Yep. Okay. Um, that's a point. That's not all of the expenses you were discussing, though. No. You were talking uh, about, about payments. Like the, Payments to uh, Paul Dreher. Paul Dreher, yeah. Yes. Paul Dreher is the architect uh, in charge of this project at present. Uh, and I will have to tre uh, check with uh, Northwest Regional Planning Commission and uh, Kathy. Uh, Little Lavoy, thank you. <laughs> Kathy Lavoy uh, to find out when we can start receiving payments on that grant. That was a housing and urban development grant. So. What did they have for expenses though? Yes. Just recently? Everything went Paul Dreher has a monthly expense of around $1,500. <clears throat> and then just uh, the copier contract expense? Yeah. Was that something we weren't? Expecting to go up that much? I um, that would be a Kathy question. She does the what was the question? The copier. Copier expense. We're we're we were, we're expecting a five hundred dollar expense for the year. We put five hundred dollars to it. We're almost at a thousand already. Um, copier. Which where is that at the top? That's no, it's in here. Page two down towards the bottom half of the page. Oh, I don't know. On the, on we put in 500, but she's already spent 924. Right. So in the whole. We're not even halfway through the year, so it's just a. Is that a one time payment, I'm wondering? Or is that a, Actually, I will correct you in that our, our fiscal year follows the calendar year. Okay, so we're halfway through the year. Yes. But the, the question is is that per click, or is that per one time payment and just didn't know it was going up that much? I know it's more than once because I've paid it twice, I think at least twice already this year. Right. So we're not done paying it this way, so it's what we're I am thinking here. that we're not, but I'm not sure what the contract is. Yeah, if I remember correctly, that contract was made after we made the uh, budget. I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know if they. If it like covers a certain amount, and then if we go over, then we need to pay more. I'm not sure what what is in the contract. So, um, so. Out of my mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we'll have to ask Kathy. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought there. I think there was a bill in there last month or last week, a couple weeks ago. There's the definitely been at least once this year. Yeah. Um, if my computer was working remotely quickly. I could go look it up really quick, but it would take me like 10, 15 minutes to find it. So. <laughs> Is that a reflection of the service we have here or the computer itself? It's the computer. We're, me and John are working on getting it switched out so that it works a little faster. Just curious. Yeah. It's not the internet. It is in my house. <laughs> At my house. So what's the bringing residence plans? Hmm? What's the bringing residence? The balance on that we don't we haven't spent that in years, Eric. Well, because we're, we're, we're in the hall. Hmm? Yeah. It's, here you go. <coughs> on the Brigham residence, Thank you. which I didn't think we had. Okay. Well, and I can look up what that was. Like I told you, I can get back to you right. tomorrow. Is that where we paid for plywood out of? The plywood should have been coming out of the Brigham. Uh, that came out of Brigham expense. Brigham right? expense, yeah, because that was this warrant, I believe. I don't have an answer for you on that one, Terry. I, I don't I really have anything to do with that thought. And I can, like I said, I can look it up and send you guys an email tomorrow. Yeah, let you know exactly what that was. Perfect. I think that plywood got paid last time. I don't think it's in this time. It should be like, is it like three or four? 
in there for the frigo yeah. on this torrent. I think they probably was on the last one. one. I think it was on the last one. I feel like I saw, was it? Yeah. I wasn't the one that left today, so I can be fine. H-U-D. Oh, great. The Housing and Urban Development Grant is for $45,000, and we got another $10,000 from uh, Franklin County Industrial Development Corp. I think that was split five and five, five for the previous project and 5000 for this one. So, if that helps at all. Um, so, I would expect that the Brigham expense would be reimbursed when the uh, Housing and Urban Development $45,000 grant comes in. Okay. We have that grant. Um, it's one of those deals where once you spend it, you get reimbursed for it. You get reimbursed for it, but you got to spend it first. Yeah. Uh, any other questions on that? Finance? I'm good. Terry? I'm good. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Hall? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hall. You're up next. I'm going to be a while. I didn't know whether it was going to go first. That would be between you and Hobie if you want to switch. That's up to you guys. You want to go? Yeah, we'll go. First, I should be. I'm not Go ahead. Okay. Uh, by request of the visitors, we're now going to take Hobie Gates instead of Matt Hall. Hobie Gates wants to discuss boundary line adjusting. Who's that old critter you got next to you? Requires a quick claim deed. 
Okay. And a quick claim deed only requires the knowledge of the two parties directly involved, whereas a review by the Planning Commission requires all abutters be advised. I may be wrong, but that's my understanding of the articles. So, so. what Michael gave us mm -hmm. was the paperwork, and he told us all we had to do was submit this to the town, mm -hmm. because he had made the adjustments to where it needed to be, mm -hmm. and have it registered into the book. Okay. Since there was no way switched. All right. So he surveyed. He, he did, and but. He filed the map. That's fine, but the select board has no authority over this whatsoever. You can come to us and you can ask advice and I give you my two bits, okay? But the select board has no authority over a boundary line adjustment that goes through the Planning Commission. I'm sorry. Just so you know, these two gentlemen were at the Planning Commission meeting. I understand the Planning that. Commission sent them to us. I understand that. Okay, just, just to clarify. Yeah. Okay, so <coughs> on the other hand, mm -hmm. the property has three deeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all the people that are involved, so the 18 people that are involved, there, there isn't 18 people because we already own deeds to some of those parcels. Mm -hmm. So oh, they sure. do not border that. Did, did you approach the Planning Commission with a single deed in your hand and a single deed in your hand so that you have two abutting pieces of property and not all this other property. No, we gave them what Michael had gave us, mm -hmm. and then but they... it, it pertains. Correct me if I'm wrong. This boundary line adjustment pertains to only one deed that you and uh, Lindsay own. Michael yes. put them all into one, yes, but they're all, there's three separate deeds. Three separate deeds. Yes. So, I mean, it's... So, I, I, I could be wrong, but it, I think you can simplify this by having a quick claim deed written between this deed and that deed. Yeah, you quick claim your sliver, you quick claim his sliver to each other. I guess yes. right from the book. That only requires a mutual agreement. It doesn't even require a survey. And even though we've already had it served. Even though you've already had it served. The laws could have changed. I could be wrong. Okay. Did you have no, a I was thinking that they needed it, they needed point? the survey approved by the planning commission and recorded mm -hmm. in order to have the claim deed. Okay. But I'm not sure. I would check with an attorney. They would know. Quick, quick claim deed is about $150, $200. Yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty it's, easy. It's pretty easy, but I don't know if they need an approved sign yeah. up survey to do it, or if it's, I don't know. I would check with them. That again would be the planning commission. Only up. if that only if they need that signed up survey. If they don't, like Lance is suspecting. So why how come the committee, committee didn't make a rule or not? I don't believe they had the correct information. Well, I think what happened was they were appealing the multitude of abutters notifications because, and there's, I'm corrected, there's 15 abutters plus you and Andrew, so that's 17, and you already own one of the abutting properties. Yes. There, so that's beginning to trickle it down a little bit, but if one of those D parcels is smaller, in the entire farm, that should cut out a lot of the butters. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right, and so, that's that's what we're we're 
we've got right here is the one that goes to the what we call the Wands Barn mm -hmm. has yep. 16 acres. Okay. And we have one of the other deeds butts that on the north side of it all the way to the brook. From the farmhouse all the way down through uh, across the back meadow and then down the ditch line to the brook. So that would eliminate anybody on that side on the northern section. Mm -hmm. The other one is the parcel of land that is behind uh, Clement and Charmaine's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fire station. Okay. okay, there's a parcel up there, it's eight wood. Um, it used to go all the way down before they split. Right. They split. It used to go all the way down to the fence line. We sold the section to Harmon, which is now a store. And we sold, sold some, or gave some to the fire department. Mm -hmm. So that section is out. But the rest of it is behind Clement Charmaine's. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the other people's name. It, it's a boundary line adjustment between the two abutting pieces of property. It doesn't have anything to do with everybody else. You shouldn't have to include them if you do it right. Well, that's what we're we're here with. I'm I sorry that you. I, this is in an advisory position only. I cannot make a decision on this. The select board cannot make a decision on this. You came here for advice. I can throw stuff at you and I may end up sticking my foot in my mouth. It wouldn't be the first time. It won't be the last time. Well, they came because our planning commission sent them here. Correct. Right. That's why they're here. They aren't the here. The planning commission shouldn't have sent them here because we have no authority to make a decision. Well, then they're the ones that we should be speaking to. Right. Well, I'm on the planning commission. Since well, what are you doing sending them here then? <laughs> well, we did, they kind of appealed to the select board because there was a planning commission meeting. I'm going to have to watch these to do the minutes. There was a planning commission meeting on May 2nd, and Brenda <coughs> sat at that table and presented this and asked the planning commission if she had permission not to notify all the abutters because so many of them were affected in this particular thing and they said that they didn't think they had the authority to lift the requirement of notifying all the abutters of the adjacent properties even though this one is so huge in the village and about so many properties so they didn't give her permission to not notify some of them yeah. and that's where it was left on may 2nd and in my head, I was thinking the select board said that because the planning commission didn't say anything. <laughs> but I watched the video, and at one minute and fourteen, one hour and fourteen minutes, she directly asked them if she could not send all because she was saying there were fifteen abutters plus them, um, and it added up, and none of them were none of them were affected by this boundary line adjustment. So that's where it was left. And so then, you know, Hobie was like giving the same rationale and they didn't feel like they had the permission, you know, and um, after Hobie spoke, we had Emily Claw from the regional, Northwest Regional Planning Commission. They asked her about, you know, the procedure of making an amendment to the border adjustment if there's nothing really happening nobody's affected do all the other to be notified but like i've been going through the bylaws and i can't find where it requires us to notify about it. i'm sure well when i did mine i did not have to you did not was just and you subscribed the boundary line I, adjustment i bought from sam and put it all in one. Oh, it I will did. go all in one I mean, if you buy, a I didn't parcel, have to send to anybody that I was doing it. No, so only if you would bad. subdivide. This is different. If okay. you like that, they've got three deeds, but it's a contiguous property, so it looks like one. When you look on like parcel viewer and you're looking at abutting properties, mm -hmm. it's one huge piece of land. But like Hobie says, there's three deeds, 
So if this parcel adjustment is only affecting one of those deeds, right. Right. And, and which many, should narrow down are the butters. Right. Yeah. Many, so should they, they go back to the planning commission? They'll have to go back to the planning commission. But um, if we can't make a ruling on that, where, where it's changed. I mean, I'm sure it does, because that's how you were trained. But I can't find it. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they yeah. told Jimmy's. Jimmy's. So there's three. And then it would go up to where um, Desertel's line comes this way. Our metal goes up, squares off. So Desertel's. And then, and then you got Soul all the way over to Farb and Sam's land. Yeah. And then it goes down to Barb and Sam. Josh, and then it's uh, I don't know the people that bought. Jimmy, this is you're talking about just the parcel, just the parcel, the the joints of Mr. Vincent. Yes. Okay. That's that deed. That's that sixteen deed. acres. Yeah. yeah. The people who bought Jody and uh, she But it, you're not talking about an adjustment on any of the other sides. You're only talking about an adjustment on which side of your property. It would be the north side. The north no, side. No, it would be the west. What? Uh, the west. West side. East side. East side of it. Okay, I went to a camera. Yeah. And when okay. that's their point, like, yes. it, it, would they present it the other night, like Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Was that, you know, really it only affects <coughs> three of them. Two of them were in the, in the middle of the, the actual moving, and then you had the store, right? If I remember right. Yes. So that was the point. And they, they went and asked Bill. And the planning commission to just help them out and kind of do they have to do they have to make that change? And the bills what Bill was saying was, you know, the way he reads it, it reads different. So that's why Bobby came back and says, Hey, wait, this is three feet parts of the land. And you know, that would help a bit. It sounds like you're gonna have what, round nine? You're gonna have fifty percent. Yeah, because there's eighteen in it. But that you know, there you go again. You know, <laughs> I kind of wonder why we have to Notify our own relatives uh, when they already know that what we're doing they, and they agree on doing it. They, they own part of the land. So, uh, which would be Barb, Josh, Josh mm -hmm. Brenda, myself. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't be able to that part for that parcel of deed. I would be able to. To, to. to me, in my opinion, I very much sympathize with what you're saying. And I agree with you. However, the select board does not have the authority to make that decision. And I would go back and, and try and make an agreement with the planning commission that it deals with this deed and it deals with this deed. The line between these two deeds involves nobody else but you and Mr. Vincent. And it's not like the planning commission doesn't want to grant that. It's what they can do according to the law. It's according to the, the IRS, yes. Yeah, so okay, they would so. love to not. But then, you know, in this case, will be yes, all relatives that you have are in agreement. What if we didn't notify them? Like in another instance, I mean, we've got to do the same thing to every single person that applies. What if one of those relatives didn't agree, but were not notified? They can wreak holy heck on us, mm -hmm. you know, in the long run, if we did not notify them and they had the proper notification and, um, I want to say warning, but that's not what I mean. <laughs> what if they all had a letter saying, hey, I give permission to this and, you know? That's a possibility. If you showed up at the planning commission with a letter from each better. I did bring that up. Yeah. Um, I did mention having people sign off and say they don't want the notification. And I think Obi was still there. Right? Yeah, I was here. And yeah. it, Bill, Bill was clear. It's like you know he's he's not going to try to figure out or try to circumvent. You know, I mean, we just got to get it the right way. Now to Bill's point, and Bill's not here, so it's kind of hard for him to talk to himself. So Bill's point, he said, if you guys can hold off, maybe we can get some kind of bylaw to go to vote, but then it's the town who decides if you can change those bylaws, you know, so there's no guarantee that that would happen. I think your idea with the, with the parcels or, the, you know, the, the deeds will help, but it's not going to alleviate the cost altogether. 
I still need to find So let me ask you <laughs> just a question here. If we sold that that parcel of land to somebody else and they had they owned all all the rest of that and, and the only one that would butt up to it would be Mr. Vincent, us, and the person we sold that land to. Then you had three three people notified, which, by the way, I find a little redundant since two of you are in the in the process of doing this switch. To me, you know, the way it reads, you have to send out three notifications, but it would really be like almost one one person. And that's to Lance's point. He's saying quick claim. You know, I, I don't believe you have to notify people on a quick claim. It's like you know. Time you just bought a piece of property, you don't have to unless go out it somebody else directly. I don't believe you have to. I mean, that's Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Or you Michael. 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 Mine was a quick claim, and I didn't have to notify anyone. Yeah. But did you subdivide? No. Did you they purchase land from? from you purchased land. Okay. Right. All right. So we're sorry, we're sorry we couldn't be there anymore. Honestly, yeah. I wish you could say it. Oh, done. Well, um, I think personally, I think the this needs to be brought up that the the procedure, or whatever it is, needs to be changed because I can totally understand if this was a big process of multiple things happening, mm -hmm. but with only two people, and you know. There should be some sort of amendment in that stating that they, they have the authority to grant this because it's such a small parcel compared to, you know, a big parcel of land. At the risk of aggravating the planning commission, I agree with you. No, um, and the it, planning commission. It should be simpler for this. But in order to add that amendment, depending on our town policy, it either has to be voted in by the town. It would have, yeah, you are correct. You know, so it would we don't change have the town policy, it would have to be voted in. time for the general to do all that would need to be done, so it would be a town meeting next year. Public hearings are involved in that. Yeah, yes. public hearings, there's wording, there's blah, 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 warnings. And, and Bill is very familiar with the process. He's yep. been through it a couple yep. times before. And I think they're totally wanting to do that. Put an amendment in because, like you're saying, there's really no reason. Well, there is no document conceived by man that is perfect. So, Everything. So, Tim, so you're you can't so, find it in that file. You know, this is just one of them. It could be another I, example. I can't the right. find it written. That. I'm looking for it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's how she was trained. They all had to be. And I know about it. But I don't know if it's what it is. So Linda's saying um, she believes this is a good question for the town attorney. Question mark. What's a good question for the town attorney? Well, just the Linda, you want to unmute and just explain your your comment, please. Sure. It's basically like Tammy says. You get into some deep water here when you start playing, you know, uh, quarterback and. You don't have all the information that you need. You can either go to the League of Cities of Towns and get their legal opinion, or you can go to your town attorney. And it takes a lot of the guessing out of it. Right. And I know every time I go to the League, it's, it's free, right? The advice out there. Yes, yeah. it is. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. Some towns use uh, League of Cities of Towns attorneys. The abutter notification is on page nine, our uh, paragraph three, well, article two under B. Written notification to the applicant to owners of all properties adjoining the property subject to development without regard to how they today, blah, 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 blah. But that's, I think, where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's just developing. And I, that, that is in the Bakersfield Town Plan. So they're required to follow that as best they can. About public notice. So it's, if no. you can wait until after, they can hopefully get an amendment passed so that they could exempt, or you can proceed, and I'm just talking off my head, proceed with the single 
deed to parcel and go with the abutters that are around there. I mean, I've got you on the agenda for the Planning Commission next month. Um, I'm going to try to figure it out. I would just go with the one deed against and another deed the attorney, and break it down into smaller need, parcels and ask them if that survey. makes a difference. Yeah, because that's what we wanted, that what we just talked about with the ones that we were naming. That would be the 16-acre parcel. Because you're not changing the volume of the property, either property. Mm -hmm. No, no. It's just simply a boundary line adjustment, which but usually then, just involves a quick claim deed. Even at that point, I believe you still have to do a transfer tax file, even though you wouldn't have to pay any transfer tax, because it is changing land between two people. It's transferring of land between two people, even though there's no land gain, so you wouldn't have any tax, but you still have to file it. Okay. I think that's what Michael was sending in now, because he surveyed it, so it was showing that no land was... Right, but he wouldn't send in the transfer tax form to the state. Nor would he do any quick claim work. No, he wouldn't do any quick claim work. I would call an attorney and find out if they need an approved survey to do a quick claim. If they don't, they just already, go They already have an approved survey. It hasn't been filed yet. Well, you haven't signed it. From the planning commission that hasn't signed it yet. Yeah, and there's been no fees paid, so no, it's not complete. Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> If they don't need that to get a quick claim, yes. then go with that. Call up someone you know and go, what if? I would call an attorney. <laughs> hey, what if? The for All you. right, well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you. Okay. Sorry we couldn't come to a satisfactory conclusion to this for you. Well, what? no question. Your opinion, that's all. Each one of you use it for 15 years and it won't get any Each one of you use it. the yeah. land for 15 I mean, years and it won't get any less. You mean like, uh, that stuff is going to be poor. No, no. It has to be, you can do it right now. Mr. Hall. Well, I have a whole bunch of people. I noticed on the agenda, I have an A, B, and C. It's a big one. It's a big one. Mr. Hall here is he has three points that he would like to discuss with the select board. I'm gonna have to listen to all that. Please, sir, wherever you want. So fourth of July. Um, this was gonna I heard you sing. Pardon? I heard you sing on Fourth of July. No. No? <laughs> That's a dirty rumor. Fourth of July. Um follow through with my life when he was out of town and said wanted to button up some things. I apologize, I'm a bit in dark as this is his baby. <laughs> um, so reiterate, I guess we're closing the road. Yes. You Where does that closing start? Are you, That's what we were trying to figure out. Yeah, because the sign shows the road closes right outside the town building. Is Traditionally, it's been closed at the four corners and it goes down past the uh, town garage and it's closed there. So we're going to put, yeah, at the Four Corners, we're going to have our rescue at the Four Corners, mm -hmm. or maybe by the Historical Society. As in years past, we've had medical incidents mm -hmm. amongst, so we need that to be able to move. Okay. Um, close it at the town garage. Our biggest fear is for other side by side things of that nature. Yep. And keeping them OUT. Um, Are you envisioning a truck or a grader or a bulldozer back home? What do you all pay with? Just have to let us know what you want and when you want it. I feel like, uh... Are you going to have a truck down there? Yeah, I'm going to have a truck. I have to because of the fireworks. Okay, so... So I can go get a corner of the road. One of the truck, maybe? Yeah, but I just need to make sure, however we do this, we get traffic blocked. But if I need to leave quickly for something with that truck, mm -hmm. I can... I can you usually leave a space between the two yeah. trucks with... with Saw horses and the sign. So I got one individual running around with four other ATV that could help for medical emergencies, things of that nature, a go getter chaser, if you will. Yeah. So the ability to duck between with that would be beneficial. Yeah. Um, I feel like if we shut so, the road. So you're worried about four wheelers driving it. 
So maybe we could advertise that four wheelers will not be allowed from the town of Rarge to the Four Corners that night. If they want to drive them and they park yeah. on King Road, King's that's Hill fine. Road, or that's it's, fine. To me, it's, it's a safety they issue. They will not be allowed it's, past that's the how town it's of been, uh, I know, I know uh, some of you have missed out on a couple of years because of COVID here, but traditionally all traffic is, we've tried to shut down all traffic. Yeah. And especially, uh, we're not having it this year, but they were especially uh, strict when the air show yes sir that's so it's going to be a lot more lax than it has in the past and strategically i don't have to place the trucks in the manner which i've done in the past which was required by last year two years ago the faa and whatever yes else. which we had a truck midway um we're yeah. the historical society if you will i don't need to i think we'll put that one up here okay. and maybe put the rescue i'd like the rescue in the middle um, so if we close that road, if I get hold of you, say 5.30, if you were big, yep. something like that. And all through traffic on Main Street, um, fire station. So our equipment's going to be open, or out, sorry. So okay. I want to make sure everybody knows that fire station is open for parking, 100%, because I think that'll alleviate a lot of parking mm. problems with it. Thank you very much for that. That'll make it a lot easier. Um, yeah and we're a little bit upset we we're hoping so our lawn was supposed to have been redone and you know it's rained a little bit yeah so depending on the conditions of that how much rain we get between now and then like we may have to rope off the lawn if you will yeah. because we're worried about mud i don't need somebody stuck nope. if it's dry then sure um or less well, they so have the whole school yeah, yeah, they got the school, but still everybody wants to stay on Main Street. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a 4th of July yet with the sidewalks. So a lot of people used to park on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Good point. So that's going to be another one is making sure that we try and keep the parking off the side of the road. So the traffic, the traffic is accessible. Um, probably have traffic guides to get people in and out and ensure that walkers, pedestrians are safe which I think the school and the fire department really should hopefully be ample parking. Um, I don't know if you've looked. I just looking at the weather for Saturday. Don't want to. <laughs> Actually, partly mostly cloudy skies, the sky thunderstorms in the morning. I-77. Uh, could change. Could change. You know, this is, yeah, yes. This morning they were calling for rain and night. So, yeah, uh, right, they're yeah. not calling for it right now. But I don't look. That night. Do you have uh, a rain date now? What's that? Is there a rain date just in case? I, not that I'm aware of, but again, this sort of isn't mine. This was Paul's. Yeah. In the, uh, I didn't mission. see where they no. advertised a rain date. No. There is no more special concerns committee, so it is pretty much Paul. Okay. Portal Lats. Place like Paul has been booked till Labor Day. Do you have a couple more items that are You want just the one? Uh, handicap, right? Yes. Plus this one over here. I'll make some phone calls tomorrow and see what I get from that one lady. We got this one from, so they're both two. Okay. okay. Labor Day. I was supposed to ask. Uh, we do have somebody to have to be here on call, but uh, we do have this bathroom here for handicap. Okay. Um, I'm going to rent there. And handicap parking, which was another thing. Wherever you want to put it. And it was, it has traditionally been on the east side of the uh, historical site. Okay. there. That would be the best. Just to eliminate, so we can mitigate that at the four corners. Somebody pulls in with the handicap sign. Mm -hmm. um, we could just direct them. We've got signage at the station. Um, so we could reserve a spot for half a dozen or so. And it could be broadened as we go, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have fire protection for the fireworks. And you and I will. So I will be down below with you, <laughs> me, and I want one of my EMT <coughs> Ginger will most likely be down there with me. Todd will be floating uh, amongst, and maybe more so at the four corners here. So after the glow stick incident, I think it's pretty imperative that we have some bags and folks around. Do you want those white sawhorses that we usually set up? Yeah, those were pretty good because they can be here, here and, and there. Yeah. Okay. Are those at the other road They're station? They're at the north station. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll get them. I'll probably plan on where you're going to be. 
on Saturday. Somewhere around my house. Okay, so I'm guessing uh, if anyone I've got going on to home, you know, I'm gonna say my target would be to be at the station and the fire station at quarter to five, five o'clock, get the trucks out, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, we can have a little sign pull it up ahead of time. Yeah, it won't take too long. Yeah. We we'll do that quick. And I, I got some road clones. Do you have enough for close signs? Because we do have. I check. What time was it? Was that food booth thing going on? Five. Five thirty. It's five thirty. I think it's oh, five thirty. Is there a the rusty bucket band at six maybe? Oh, that's the uh, the DJ. The DJ starts at I film at six and goes to seven, and then the rusty no. bucket. Okay, so something. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah I'm but, yeah. so I think we should be all good. Um, if anybody here has any questions or, well, compared to other years, it's, it should be pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. Um, there's some talk of maybe hot dogs or something going on. Yeah, there's going to be, uh, our group is doing hot dogs and hamburgers and, uh, uh the milk that's being done here, the chocolate milk for the kids and water. I think that's us. And then my understanding is shortcakes and ice cream is by um, church. The church. And then, um, has the three sisters doing something? The three sisters bakery. Bakers. The yeah. three sister bakery is doing something. Yeah. There's a, there's it's another awesome. piece. Um, and Linda the historical society, I thought they were doing ice cream. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I keep mixing up the church and historical sure. society. Linda. Linda. I hear that. Yes. Oh, the historical that? society is doing their traditional ice cream cones and water, and they'll also be doing a raffle on uh, firewood. And a raffle, it's kind of an abbreviated of what we usually do for silent auction. It's doing what we are calling a sock bucket auction. You buy a book of tickets, and then you put your ticket in the bucket near the item that you're interested in. We have six items that have been donated yeah. for a fundraiser, plus the firewood that's been donated. So you're doing the ice cream, which means the church is doing the strawberry shortcake. Mom's exactly, doing Mom's doing yes. And we're also doing a pie sale. Right, and the pie sale, I'm sorry, yeah, the historical size with the pie sale. <laughs> The Cold Hollow Community Collective is doing the burgers, the dogs, the water, the 50-50s, and the milk. Yeah. The chocolate milk. I can't yeah. just cut it short. Okay. The historical, historical Society does water. Oh, we were just does bottled that. water. Yeah, we've always done that in the past. So throughout the course of this, if anybody has questions, comments during the event or needs or anything like that, myself or Paul, I guess, would be the contact for the fire department. Paul has seen himself as a chaser. <laughs> so, whatever that means, we'll so, find out. Is the meeting still on for tomorrow night at the firehouse? Yeah. With regards to this? Yeah. So, uh, I think that's it before the vote. Do you have any questions, comments? I know concerns? Paul had asked me to introduce, uh, do the pledge, yep. national anthem, uh, our Robert and Sarah Joe singing. I believe so. Okay. I'm uh, supposed, supposed to do an introduction. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We time it right. The fireworks go off at the end of the anthem. Uh, I assume Krieger is doing them again. Derek? Derek. Derek and his wife. Uh, for, uh, uh, who was the other guy? Derek? Out of the... Larry? No, no, Larry doesn't do it anymore. No, uh, it's Derek and uh, he, he's a police officer. Yes, yeah, I can't think of his name. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. Is it Joe? Joe, okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So, okay, same folks as before. Perfect. And they'll be set up very below town garages as they were in the past. Okay. Right. Right. Um, I think that's it for that. Second one, um, most, so amongst the fire department, I kind of brought this up and spearheaded it a little bit. Um, they get called to these 911 addresses, mm -hmm. these places that they hard to get to. Mm -hmm. And it's just got me thinking a little bit. I, I did one that found myself a bit perplexed, like I should have brought a four-wheeler to. Mm -hmm. And by all means, you know, to preface this, I, 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 I'm worried about fire protection and ambulatory coverage in these remote camp locations, things of that nature. Um, not looking for any answers, not looking or not making any mandates, and we definitely do not want to deter or throw stipulations on the town that is going to deter from any houses or 
developments or sales, I, I think it's imperative, but I'm concerned. For example, Belvedere Mountain Road, you know, some of those last ones, right, getting a truck up there. Where was it? Like Belvedere Mountain Road, oh, the last four section. Oh. They're rough. Uh, there's a couple of spots, like the further end, I know the truck, boy, you know, if we don't have the clearance because we get the drain valves on the pumps. Right. Have you compared with some of this, man? Oh, absolutely. It's, you know, and I pre planned my way out, if you will, looking at things. So, okay, if so if camp on the end is burning, what do we do? First and more, we've got a really slow response. Let's say it's, we're from May till September, which is pretty long time. There's one truck out there. And then if we need water, it's going to be a very slow ride up to dump a load of water. Yeah. One truck up, one truck back. No turning around. Like, no, we're not passing each other. No. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I suppose with enough mutual aid, you could lay holes way up there. <laughs> Best case scenario, we've got a very timely event in preparing ourselves, you know, to get the structure protected with water. Well, the uh, fire department uh, make a proposal in writing as to what you believe you require? Well, this is. I think maybe first we were looking to you folks for advice. Mm -hmm. um, yes, indeed, to answer your question. But I want it to be best so we know what's involved. I, I, I kind of like to collaboratively work with you folks and maybe the planning commission too on this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this is. Is that the only sort of concern, or is there a couple? You get a county road gets bad. Too. County road, um, he still can get. No. Up there, um, Waterville, Waterville Mountain Road, and I haven't even gotten into winter time. So, yeah, yeah. And I'm using Belvedere Mountain, I mean, not to single them out, but simply because I was up there last and it really, it really got me thinking. So, going, I went through the town zoning bylaws, the ones that are on the revised in March. There's really nothing in there other than a driveway over 400 feet is required to turn around for fire protection. Um, and that's it. <coughs> um, the other thing is ambulatory. You know, it, it does go beyond beyond us. And you know, one of these camps. I mean, obviously they're not lived in. They're, they're considered seasonally, and mm -hmm. probably the summer is the most desired season to be up there. And we may do with the ambulance in the summer. I think we'd be okay. Yeah, well, um, a little like uh, Log Cabin Lane. You know, I know you've had a problem up there before yeah. in the time. Yep. Yeah. Yes, we don't maintain it. To a, lot, a lot of them have to go through December for black yeah. powder. Or and, and that's so the other part of what I would be getting at, but to, to continue on, you know, in the summertime, we've had ATV accidents up there, and we have to stage the ambulance and make sure the ambulance fits up there. Amp care seems to fit a little better because they come into the vans, a little bit more clearance. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had to bring anybody out yet. I mean, my worst fear is a bad weather event. You know, snow or catastrophic rain, and the road gets washed out. And and Matt could chime in on this. I'm not sure where the town portion of it ends. It's, it's not about much about class it's just below class four. the class four where the town or the class four would go all the way to the line. I'm oh, sorry, class three. So class class three is right there. But Charles or Charlie used no, to be way back the side. It's just about Larry's. There's uh, a sign actually. Not far from. There's actually a sign there. Yeah, right on that yeah. hole yeah. by the first. So, so from there on up, if you know a bad weather event were to occur, I think first and foremost, you know, those homeowners need to know it's it's up to you guys. And if the road is either snow, ice, or been washed out, you know, I I, I say this loosely, but I, I is it at least a fifty foot right away? So they widen the road quite a little bit. Yeah. Um, fifty foot wide right away. For uh, the difference between right of way and travel way. Yeah, okay. So the travel way does this. Yeah. Yeah. However, it's got better because they put power up there. Um, <clears throat> and I, I say this very loosely, but I struggle a little bit, you know, with some of the dwellings up there to put a very expensive piece of equipment up there mm -hmm. and risk damage. Yeah. Um, Nonetheless, you know, from the fire department's perspective, we are going to try. And our, our shining silver bullet would be fairfield with a little mini pumper, a little F550. Uh, so I kind of had 
stipulations amongst the fire department on certain roads, you know, obviously that being one, that they're called immediately. Okay. You know, hands down. That they gotta go first. And Matt, yeah. you wanna work with us and the planning commission to have a definitive plan. That, that, that would be my I th I think it would be better that way, so we're all on the same page. And like yeah. I said, we're not looking to, you know, throw mandates. I don't wanna do that. I just want First and foremost, everybody to be protected, but all of us to be on the same page and come up with something that's amicable and, and safe for everybody. Uh, and it's not something we're going to do this week, next month, or the month after. It's maybe a collaborative effort. Wasn't there a, um, there was a stipulation for the uh, travel way width on class four? I couldn't find anything. And I thought there was. I just gave it That's what I thought was the 50. But no, that's a 50 foot right of way, but that's not a travel way. The, the clear passageway for a vehicle would be the uh, travel way. Um, See, I, I couldn't find, and, and the three planning commission okay. folks here could chime in. I thought, it, I thought we had that. I, I have uh, that. Yeah, maybe where we're going to look. I thought I saw that. What are state mandates? State mandates that the, uh, the three rods. class four roads have to be. <sighs> Travelable at least one season out of the year. But like in the winter time, going into the winter time, I mean, I don't know how well these are plowed. I don't go up there. Matt could could answer that. Jim uh, Miller new plows. You know, he has his taken care of pretty good his place. From there up to the Charlie's left, I don't know if they take care of that. Uh, there might be one kid that up there. I mean, if that's not, you know, again. He's moving. Uh -huh. The one kid that's up there past Billadu, they're moving. I think uh -huh. they either purchased or they're building elsewhere. Okay. So right. I don't but, believe. But if that road's not plowed and we're, you know, January 11th and you need to snow, they're done. They're done. Yeah. Well, we have to look but into it think, anyways because if I think the fact is, is moving out, because wasn't that not supposed to be able to be? Which year round? There is one up there, yes. It was not supposed to be habited year round. I thought neither one of them was supposed to be year round. I, I know at least one, Terry. I, I, I don't know about both of them, too. I thought it was the two. Is it both of them? But so. one of them actually had it right in the yeah. sales agreement. Or yes, it did. Or something. That's the, the one I referred to. Have yeah. It actually in the but neither one is, so I think once this person is out, we need to pursue that. We have an active complaint right now against one of the residents up there, and we're uh, working on how to legally enact that. It's been pending too long. Yeah, that one's been going on for seven years. Yeah. And one thing out of this I'm trying to eliminate is to make sure everybody's got protection, but also in the event that we deemed said road impassable for whatever. Yep. I think I'm gonna call some insurance companies and find out what their take on things are. But I, I don't want it to fall back on the fire department of the town. You didn't try, you didn't get there, you didn't mm -hmm. you know, um I don't know if, if down the road we well, we'll sure won't ensure you if you have a railing missing from a no, thank you. That, that's where I'm at. Is they would ensure you if a fire truck. But if I do tactfully want to do this in such a manner that it doesn't deter, you know, people from building or purchasing, you know, thus the town losing tax revenue, things of that nature. I just think it needs to be done. If any of that makes sense. Yeah. So, I, I think it's going to be something that all of us together work on and. and in yeah, conclusion, yeah. coming to you folks with advice, um, where would you like us to start? List your specific concerns, and we'll set up a meeting at some later time. We'll sit down and seriously discuss them, and what jointly discuss how we can solve this. Okay. Would you like me to attend a, or would you recommend me attend a planning commission meeting and express my same concerns? This is the, if we're going to get it changed permanently, we're going to have to change part of the town plan to address it. Yeah. And so that's what I, I, I the planning commission does need your input. Okay. Yes. Because okay. I mean, I don't want to do anything big and invasive, but yet I just I feel I, I just feel a little uneasy. Mm -hmm. I think would be a fair statement. 
And rightly so, something could, it may not, but something very well could have happened. And we've been very, very fortunate so far. And yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, the Halloween storm happened once every and it happened. Yeah. yeah. So I've learned to to not overlook things that may never happen. So I think that's it on that. If anybody's got any, any other questions, comments, concerns? No, I, I think the, the first step is coming up with a solid list of concerns. Okay. And come back to you folks? Yes, please. Okay. Please do that. Yeah. Um, last on my list, so I'm sure you folks all get the comic carrier and so let's cook him down my way. Um, Josh was over and asking me a lot of questions about this, which is the proposed cell tower that's going out on my farm. Uh, I'd like to throw a little correction in. The agenda said looking for approval, I'm not here looking for, for approval, rather Support. just giving, no, not even, just information for you folks, the information you can do whatever you want with. I'm not here to any sales. Mm -hmm. um, so they are, so I've been working for a year and a half or so with this company called Industrial Communications and Hearts. They're a relatively new company in the area. Um, they've got towers from Florida to New mm England. -hmm. Very reputable company, very, very professional. Um, so they, the goal, and this all, so some of this is spearheaded from the governor's wanting to broaden broadband communications amongst Vermont and lessen the dead spots. And they approached me because I'm a very large landowner and that's what these companies like to work with, which gives them a lot of flexibility and leeway mm -hmm. in tower placement. Um, and more so tower placement being elevation. And I'm gonna try, I could talk for a long time, but I'm gonna try and narrow this up. Um, what their ultimate goal is, is to provide service for means for projection building and get rid of all these gaps and these dead spots. And they chose me because it was a very good geographically location to tie in Amesford. Mm -hmm. And I had enough <clears> land <throat> that we could put a tower in and not have this gleaming pole stick up in the middle of the map, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so the tower's gonna reside, you all folks all know where I live, Sugar House, Third Road next to it, mm -hmm. Little Dirt Road, right on the edge of the Sugar Bush and a pasture that I do nothing but grow ferns in. Um, that's where it's going to go off and run power at the dirt road. Um, with a target goal of, she runs with this really weird thing called topography that really limits and challenges things. So their target goal based upon their, their studies are, this tower should provide service, should, with no guarantees, one to two miles outside of Bakersfield Village. Their goal after this, in this, once this tower is installed and up and running and functional, um, they're looking at sites here in Bakersfield. Okay. Uh, I know one specifically they were working with, and I don't know any of the details of it, right? That you met. Not yet. Okay. Hey, tell them if they need a place on the west side of town. Come see me. Okay. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting because it's all about how things. So, residing first. Don't you already have one? Don't you already have a tower? Me tell. No, I get the. Those little units on the side. Those are VTAP. Yeah. yeah. You said when it gets combined, they would then choose a site here. Yeah, I think that's what happens. They would add another tower. Would add another tower. That, was, that would be their goal, contingent upon the tower going in at my farm. Um, so the tower out of the box is going to have, I believe, five radio whip antennas. Those radio whip antennas give the ability for fire, ambulatory, first response, or not state police to get on, as well as repeaters things of that nature. So there could be some added benefit to Innisburg, Bakersfield, first response or responding agencies um, to jump in on things like this. That sort of thing, I bet it's me. I apologize. Um, those sort of things, I tried to gain a little bit of information on to the point when they first came to me um, and I told this disclaimer, you know, whether there's one antenna or 53 cell carriers, that does not financially affect me. And this project right here, believe it or not, is very little financial benefit to me. Mm -hmm. It's a different ballgame than the silo towers because the silo towers are already a tower in place. So the infrastructure is there. These guys come in and build the infrastructure. I'm merely leasing the land. There's a, the silo tower. Uh, 
was a long time thing. Oh really? Yeah. Some of them are some of them are some of them are lucrative not for the agreement dad made was a one time payment. Okay. So So um the antennas going back on that. I, I'm not sure I've asked a lot of questions. And my first bargaining chip with them was, hey, let's uh do something for bag so you do something for Ainsford Fire and no. We're gonna leave you in, that's it. Because they didn't wanna they didn't want to embark into that. Right. So which is fair, totally fair. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if that would be like Enosburg or Bakersfield. I don't I think we would have the ability to jump on. I don't know what it would cost. I have I haven't gotten those answers yet. To mm -hmm. do like your own dispatch, you mean? Pardon? To do your own dispatch? No, no, I mean for like repeaters, um or I, this is where I'm going. I think this might be more of a sale in central thing if they wanted to put repeaters or antennas or the ones that at least. Yeah, I think so. So again, my ears are to the ground and obviously I am right in the loop first and foremost on it. Um, so once, so where the stages are on this is, oh God, it's been, it's been fun maybe. <laughs> so they've applied for a certificate of public good through the Public Utility Commission. And I think the public comment and all that, it's like June to 13th might be the deadline. So this has been going on for quite a little while. And I've kind of stayed quiet and I wanted to be a salesman. Um, but people, now that this is public, are really asking me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they have my permission, industrial does, for me to talk to you folks about this tonight. Um, and I don't unless I do have their permission. Okay. So amongst, or once the tower is approved, so the, the first first bit of information I gave regarding the weapon tennis is industrials equipment that they own. Um, as soon as the tower is approved, then they start talks and negotiations with cell carriers. Um, so the cell carriers, it's pretty pretty promising. There will be at least four up there. Um, and again, once they expand their towers along. You know, it's expected that those four will fall, you know, begin expected. So as I'm doing my speech, I'm just going this a little bit earlier. This is the how in depth and the studies that these folks have done here, from radiology studies to plant and animal. I would like these back. These are both the same. This one's stapled together. These are loosely. Um, Actually, those are easier to read through. <laughs> They've done balloon studies from floating a balloon at 140 feet to see visibility. It thumbed through it. I mean, it, it's really, really interesting to see. They've gone as far as to identify every plant, invasive species, if there is any tree, whatever else is growing. I mean, as deep as my logging roads in the sugar bush, they almost deemed as wetlands. <laughs> So they brought so Dr. Don Hayes, <laughs> who's probably, I think, in Dollar Lumpy China, if he was here, um, the most highly renowned, highly certified radiologist, maybe in the United States. I think his credentials are in the back, and he might be leaving like four pages of credentials. Okay. He's done a study on the on the radiation that would be emitted from that. Um, I mean, it's just a multitude of things. I mean, it's. It's really, it, it's been kind of fun to follow the project, if you will. Maybe in this brick of bed, to go with remote meter reading. Oh, again, for that. <laughs> so the tower does reside in Innisburg. Um, and ironically, they started on the Bakersfield end of my farm and just couldn't get things to line up. So you folks were almost in on it. I think you will be the next phase. Um, as with any project, there has been some opposition from couple of neighbors, um, all of their complaints. Matter of fact, the, radi the radiology radiation study was brought by a neighbor that was convinced that the radiation was gonna have ill effects on her children. Um, and just to tell you the magnitude and professionalism of this company, they immediately sought out and hired this Dr. Don Hayes. Mm -hmm. um, sure Did your neighbor have a cell phone or? Pardon? Did your neighbor? Use cell phones? Oh, I'll be careful. No cell coverage yet? Oh, a microwave. <laughs> what about a microwave? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, read through it. It's every certificate they presented, everything they've done. Um, 
And if you folks want it, I would like one copy back. If you guys wanted to keep one copy amongst yourself and look through it, you're more than welcome to. Um, simply because this will have, should have coverage in Bakersfield. Um, okay. You know, and, and so as a first responder, as an inventory side of things, I mean, I have worked hard for this. Um, I've seen time and time again where cell phones in the fire field and the ambulance field, it's crucial to have them. You know, cases when, when we bring a helicopter in, the first thing the pilot asks for is a cell phone so we can communicate with Burlington. And I've made it work where I had the school's Wi Fi password mm -hmm. close to the building, and then he can use my cell phone because there's nothing here. Mm -hmm. That's good and great, but when we land remotely, you know, um, they've had help net up by the lease farm before, and there's just no service. So, it you know, like the golf course will have service. That's kind of a big deal. There's a huge public place that's, that's going to have, you know, the potential spark. Well, years ago, the lightning strike for the folks that got injured. Yeah. Um, in there, so Terry just got to it and watched the new folks. In there, there's projected uh, service areas that it's, that it's going to serve. Um, actually, the tower, it looks like it's going to go almost to Canada. But going backwards, this wonderful thing Vermont has is topography, Kohala, and Hurts. <laughs> You know, even the hill by Jarvis is going to yeah. hurt us. The hill by Brian Weston is going to slow down a little bit. You know, um, Mark Magnin has a tower. This might tie into that a little bit. There's a tower on his side. So you get a little bit of service at your place, and you can get it. There's little blurbs of it on 36. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Two spots there. on 36. Well, it's funny because 36 With no leaves. was from yeah. the cream rate. All the way up to the and library. Now that's changed. And yeah. now that's changed, and you're not getting it until you get uh, almost to Heather's. So, and I'm learning more as I go. These cell carriers, the microwaves or waves or gain, if you will, is constantly changing due to technology. Mm -hmm. So, as industrial told me, you know, every six months they get new stipulations on tower placement, things of that nature. So it, it, it's really kind of interesting. Okay. Um, as, uh, as your neighbors said, uh, besides the concern of any kind of radiation leakage from the power whips or whatever, uh, has there been concerns of the actual uh, visual nature of the tower? So uh, if you go in the back, um, there's been a couple of folks that have expressed concern. The vast majority, the vast majority of the or sorry, the most visible portions of the tower, ironically, are going to be on all land that I own. Um, from from the vantage points of Borderville and Chester Arthur Road. Um, Does it kind of look like, like we have one in Georgia? They don't really like try to like stick it in the middle. Of the they kind of, it's kind of tucked. It's going to be tucked away. Yeah, it's kind of tucked away, and it yep. looks more like a mini substation. I, I suppose, I, mean, I, suppose I do it differently in the fact of, look at the big blue thing that I built, and look what it holds versus, granted, it's not going to be as tall. Yeah. Um, so there's been, there's been some folks that, uh, so there you go, Terry, right there. And you can see, if you. This one? Yep. Yeah, so that is basically that's right next to my sugar house. So those are obviously our sketch based upon the balloon float. Um, and that's a house that I own. Sean Lambert lives there. Sean's like, I can't wait to look at it. The pages that. I mean, they have. They have and I would ones. imagine they're looking She's for uh, sure. it to be close to the road. So when they do maintenance. No, not necessarily. Yes. Not at all. No. There are ones that look like trees. They have some that look like. So this is Lynn Oh, this is Dr. John Hayes with his report. That's his report. Are you not putting up a tree? No, apparently, I mean, this was all up to them. Tower placement, I I have been. <laughs> oh, I see. This is the picture with the tower. Oh, where is it? So I have been, as a landowner, under a bit of fire. Oh, you bet. That's why I don't care about that. There you go. That's right. I was trying to find the quick. As a landowner, I have been a bit under fire by some of the folks. Um, and some of these folks, there's a couple of folks that are nearly, they're not full-time residents. They own secondary homes on Chester Arthur. Um, oh, yeah. I, you know, they've expressed concern that multitude of reasons um, from 
ruining the chest chart if they're buying it, the preservation of it, which Mark has the cell towers much closer. Um, the added traffic on the road, which is incorrect. So everything's going to be going up border. Do people, people want to go look at it? I've really taken a lot of fire from a couple of folks, but <laughs> in retrospect, um, the past two weeks, so you folks are aware there was a public meeting in Inksford last week on this, hence the oh, front was page. Was it Tuesday, Wednesday night? That's why everyone was. Hence the, the front page of the County Courier, Vermont Daily did an article on it too, <laughs> as well. Um, so. The, the past two weeks have been an array of folks pulling in and cell phone ringing and stopping by with support, and we hope this works. Yeah. Um, again, to reiterate, I'm not here to sell this or to get you to support or deny it. I'm just, I think it's important that you have know, the you know, kind of what I want to. If you deem so or you want to make a public comment, so public comments um, are accepted by the Public Utility Commission. Mm -hmm. negatively or positively, um, which is something they want to hear. Regional planning actually, I think, is meeting on this Wednesday night, something like that. They could be in St. Albans. Pardon? Are they going to meet in St. Albans? Could be. It's via Zoom. I, I, I just sort of stay out of it. But So on the PUC website, if that's something that you folks were interested in looking at, commenting, um, positively, negatively, I'd be more than happy to forward an email link to somebody in which you can open it up and, and do whatever it is. You have my email? I don't know if I have your email. Do I? I have Josh's. Your Jeff Elwood. He was sharing. Do you want to send it to the town clerk? Do you want me to put that on the website? Yes, please. Okay, you just send it to the town clerk. I can get it. But I mean, I'm not here to have the. It, it's up to you folks what you do with this information. Mm -hmm. If you post this publicly on the website or choose to, it, it, I'm not. It's entirely up to you. Yeah. You know. I hope this means I can get rid of my house phone. No. Come on, Brenda. This is the He's positive cell, about the cell this. Is the last stuff that goes in. <laughs> Brenda, I don't. Uh, I got a card. That's what I mean. Give me that. I won't take up my plugging that into my phone and set them through and no, forwarding an email. It's a long, it's a long so email. if you, so that is, oh yeah, no, I don't have that one. Okay. So on the PUC website, their site's a little bit slow. Um, their site's a little bit slow, but if you get on, everything that you have in front of you is listed in there under other documents. And you can also click on public comment. So a public comment can be made either individually or as an organization in support or denial of the project. And the public comment period, I believe, is July 12th ends. Question? No. Okay. I was looking at the doctor. I'm sorry. No, I don't have any questions. Well, I understand what's going on with what, you, uh, what you're trying to do. My brother-in-law actually is one of those companies that sells they are leases the land, builds the towers, and then rents to the uh, rents to the uh, different carriers. Yes. So, I, mean, he, he, I remember he drive along with like five different cell phones, looking at different things, and he's yeah. along with the whole. So I get that. I get it. And I was saying the land, you know, some of these, the you know, the tower looks like almost any other tower out there. Some folks complain enough that they try to hide it as a tree, but the problem is it's just a big straight hole. Yep. And so you add carriers, and the carriers make your branches and leaves. Some of them, they'll same thing. Um, looking at all the different pictures in the distance, I mean, the amount of land you're talking about, I'm not exactly sure 100% where on your land it's dropping, but even if it's somewhere near the center, I don't see how anyone can really... No, it's uh, so going back, they're going to, so... From the Sugar House, or Boardville Hill, you will. Yeah. Um, so they're running power just up somehow. I'm working with them on that. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to go above ground because they didn't want to dig. And I've offered them yeah. every option known to man. And it doesn't look like they're that far off the road. No, the power will go up the dirt road somehow or another. I've come up with another plan of burying across the meadow by Sean's just yeah. to eliminate all the poles. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
like some of the public opposition that I've seen, well, let me back up a little bit. When I first started working with this company, first and foremost, like I was very excited. Self-service, this is wonderful. And all I could think of was a fire department, this is great. And then I get to thinking the last thing I want to do is make every one of my neighbors grumpy. Like I've always been my friend and supported me. <laughs> and I, that was that was a really big deal to me. I was not gonna upset my neighborhood. And uh, you know, it was at first it was just nothing but support and thank you very much for doing this. And then I was blown out of the water by one individual that was less than pleasant. Um, <clears throat> to which I'm not even gonna listen. I mean it was was bad. So, I, I hope this goes through. It, it's like 99% sure that it's going to go through. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, I didn't feel like I was here as a salesman, but rather to let you folks know, you know. Well, thank you very much. And down the road, maybe hopefully the fire department could jump on these, these antennas. We could get repeaters. We could have a lot better radio service. You know, hopefully it's a collaborative effort, you know, amongst all. So I will forward you the link, Brenda, and, and you guys can do whatever, you know, if you choose to comment and support or denial of it, um, you know, the only thing I'd say is do it fairly soon because okay. the, the clock is ticking. Did you say July 12th? I believe that's what it is, July 12th or 13th, it's called the 12th. If you look on there, it has the case age. So it's a 30 day window. Okay. And then the PUC will issue their certificate of good, which all of that again is all industrial, nothing to do with me. I knew the least the land. And like when I first started working with this company, I spent a lot of time making sure that they were the real deal. If this wasn't, you know, smoke and mirrors, and I didn't jump into a contract, got to work for six, eight months back and forth with them before I was like, all right, you guys are good. To this day, they don't step on the land. They don't do anything without an email or a phone call. And then my permission behind it for them to do so. But like a &R was up there, um, investor mandated that they contact me first. They did the balloon float, same thing. Right. Every time they're up there. So it's it's pretty good. They're, I'm happy. So far, my friend Tower's not in. But <laughs> then I've also told the townspeople that were upset, like, I'll do anything in my power because there were traffic and noise and pollution. And so I've offered them a lot more land free of charge throughout the course of the project to stage equipment, to put materials, gravel. Um, I've offered, there's going to be a standalone generator at the but tower. But once it did, there's no traffic to it. So once a month they do, so they're going to put a 20, 20, 25 foot road access road through right up to it off on the dirt road. I mean, right there on Sugarbush. Yep. And uh, they maintain plow, mm -hmm. weed lack, collect snakes, whatever, on that <laughs> road. And it's their road, but mine to use as access. Right. The compound will have a fence around it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. anybody put pad in Anybody put pad. It, it'll be a, if, so AT&T, the cell carriers are the ones that run the standalone generators. So which I think it'll be pretty cool. So the power goes out, boom. Um, and I have offered them, if noise is a problem for the neighbors, to put the generator at the barn at the sugar house because the power is going right up. All of the noise. Some of that has fallen on deaf ears. They just think that I'm being greedy. So we can, we can actually put it in a uh, uh, in a containment. It's actually contained yep. and sound attenuated. Um, we haven't down at my work if the generator really sits in a little box of its own. It's all padded for noise. And, and, yeah, I mean, you can hear it if you're standing next to it. You can hear it if you're standing probably 100 feet away from it, but it's not obnoxious. When you open those doors, it's obnoxious. It's <laughs> not forever. It's right. for the it's 20 minutes a week. during an emergency. 20, 20 minutes a week, and obviously when the power For testing, out, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's propane or diesel. They didn't elaborate. Fair enough. And I'm sure they're going to use it on that transfer switch with it that detects I would have to assume, and it's, yeah. I'm assuming fake because they're running 600 amps of power up there. Who? So did they, did they say they're going to use a, a battery backup too? So that it doesn't drop? I don't know. I, I haven't heard that. Huh. 
Possibly. I mean, some, some of the aesthetics of that sort of stuff, you know, if it's in the compound, it doesn't really affect me as a landowner. Right. You know, I've just sort of taken to the project because I do, I, I feel, personally, I feel it's important you know, to have a, a tool of this technology available for the public safety, you know, as well as, you know, the aesthetics of running businesses and things of that nature. It just, it makes life easier. It really does. They have them Absolutely. other places you don't even hear. No, no. There's one on the Nichols Road. I read a meter right beside there every month. You don't hear anything from yeah. that tower. So it was, it was kind of an interesting thing from Dr. Hayes was the radiation from this place on your ear was more harmful than, than that tower. Right. Your biggest, your biggest thing is if you climb the tower and hug the panel. Mm-hmm. Which. Uh, that's really hard. <laughs> I don't think so. so. That's why you can get offenses. So yeah. I keep you off of it. Yeah, I, I, I totally appreciate what you're doing because I was in a, most folks, folks know, I was in a head on car collision last August. And uh, I'll tell you what, um, people had to drive their houses to call for yep. for an ambulance for us. I mean, there were four of us that had to go on an ambulance. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, it was crazy. Minutes count. We were fortunate. You know, so that's what I've been trying to portray to these folks that you know show opposition of the golden hour, minutes count, seconds matter. Um, without getting into details, there was actually a, an instance here, right in Bakersfield, where an individual was hurt, and uh, it was it was it could have been really bad. And ironically, this is how I know the story. Ironically. When my employees happened to be driving by, saw the situation and said, Oh dear, I can go to X house quickly and call 911. Granted, there's a lot of traffic on this road, and I'm sure that scenario could have played out amongst multiple folks, but in that situation, it was pretty fortunate that inventory care was able to arrive in mm -hmm. the quick manner that it was. You know, another scenario that, you know, the individual that was injured if the party with her had the ability you know to immediately call my mom. You know, the lapse in time that it takes take I use my own for example, take for example my dad's accident. Yeah. Um I'll tell you what was fortunate there is Darren Fire Chief had radio in his truck. You know, let's pretend yes, we've got landlines, but jump in the truck or find the phone or You've all been there. You've all seen it, you know. Okay. So it's, I, I view this as a tool for the public safety, you know. And I don't view this as any personal gain for me other than great satisfaction of helping others out. That's where I'm at. And unfortunately, there is a few folks that view me as a demon. It's, well, on a personal note, I'm going to take a moment just to thank the fire department and the first responders for coming to the farm and uh, assisting me in for ambulance service and getting my mother sent off to St. Albans in a timely fashion. And the same goes for three years ago. Yep, when basically the same crew helped my father. Yep. Thank you very much. No, it's, that's what we're there for. That's what it's, you know, the golden hour, it's matter of seconds count. And, you know, I, I've been on, how long have I been on, 24 years? I've been on this department 24 years and everything's been by default. No <laughs> kidding. Todd Cosgrove and Dave Spencer were, it was Halloween cabbage hunt. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of folks put some tires and a couch on the fire in the road on the county road line. I was in the bar, they had no help. And I went out and gave him a hand and called Dave King down the next day and said, we got a job for you. And, I said, <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. You know, like, it's hard. It's, you know, we all have lives and jobs and we're volunteers. And I can't go well, to call. Just, you can't. Right. But same thing with fire chief. <clears throat> from that as default. <laughs> I enjoy it. So I'll send it out to Brenda. You can pass that amongst the... Uh, yeah, I'll put it to the board. It, okay. it is the 12th, by the way. It is the 12th. Yeah, the 12th. Would you folks, um, would you like one of those coffees for yourself? I can make it for yourself. I'm good to do No, I'm good. I'm good. 
I'm supportive of it for sure. Yeah, for sure. I think it's so personally or as a board, you you folks can make comments in any way, positive or negative. We'd like to hang on. What's that? We'd like to hang on the one on one for you. Oh, oh yes. you want the one that's stapled? Hang on so it's the stapled one because I can copy that for you guys. Okay. It is online. It is so I'm going to be using it. Thank you. It man. wouldn't be Thank a problem. I can if so. If you folks deem that you wanted more copies, obviously. So no. at the end of the end, we'll be fine. Well, at the end of the thirty days, there's another thirty day waiting period. Industrial told me that if the town of Bakersfield Select Board Planning Commission or any other town office would like a copy, that I could reach out to them, that they would mail you folks directly a copy. Oh. So, so and if it, again, uh, Eric Pelio is the guy on contact that I deal with. If you folks want to have any questions for them, not just them, but their team of lawyers, it's MSK, Brian Sullivan out of Burlington, um, let me know. I will give you their contact info and you can ask questions directly to them. Who's that name? It's, um, MSK. Is Matt, why don't you put that in the email to me so that it gets distributed? Okay. Brian Sullivan is the, the attorney. Oh, that's and Eric attorney. Calio. Um, he's, Eric is actually out of New Hampshire. If you want to send that to me, you can let me know. I can yeah, I'll forward that to you. When I get home, you've got my email, right? Okay. When I get home, I'll send you an email with an array of stuff on it. Perfect. <clears throat> and so keep that. You know, um, Thank you. I don't, maybe I don't need that. I get it without it. <laughs> well, you can just, if you, if you tell them, you need a copy here. Just have okay. to no, just see it. Look through it. I, you know, I want the town to have this information too. And I want, you know, I don't, I just didn't want the town to be like, oh, hey, why didn't, well, I, I feel like I brought this information to you more as a fire chief than, than a landowner. If that makes any sense. Thank you very much for sharing this information. Anybody else have anything else going on? We got one other, another, another <laughs> golf tournament is on this year. So if any of you folks, I'm being so here about that. <laughs> if any of you folks uh, would love to partake in the golf tournament or put a golf team in, <laughs> I, know, I know Josh was probably. That's, I'll get after Josh and, and see. Love to see you there. So we'll do another game this year. Um, probably gonna be looking. What's a golf tournament again? August nineteenth. August. Right. 19th. You'll be there. Maybe drove out of heart. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's well, my brother's birthday. We'll have a barbecue. Uh, probably. My brother would be there. Probably. Hopefully, the stars align. We'll be doing uh, an open house again at the fire station this year. I kind of like to call it meet the fire, meet your meet your local firefighters. Um, mm -hmm. With hopes, with big hopes that if this all works and it doesn't rain, we can bring a helicopter in. Um, they're willing to do that if we'll see. Um, it shows the community what it is and what they do, yeah. things of that nature. Um, on, a, not, on a side note, it's not a cheap trip. No. It changed a lot. It was really, it's a great, great, great organization to work mm -hmm. with. They're, boy, you know, I I just didn't call that helicopter and see the big bill and, and and see you afterwards. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, just to offer cool. to come down. Yeah. No, 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 visit. That's no big deal. Because it's slight training for them. Okay. It is how we they just, do it. We just had a helicopter come up here, what, like a month and a half ago? Two yeah, a motorcycle ago? accident. Yeah, pretty, pretty bad accident. Yeah. They, uh, that, uh, we didn't end up transporting either. First one of those we've seen. Uh, yeah, what was the reason for not transporting? The one was too large. Uh, there is oh. a way restriction on that. On the Oh. Uh, but that also, so in in the fact that that happened, it's not all a bad thing. So, Unisburg had use full use of their two paramedics. That being said, it was a direct do not pass go to Burlington, so they didn't have to stop St. Albans. So that's kind of a big deal. Ironically, unfortunately, they did have to go to St. Albans due to complications along the way. Mm -hmm. um, Gentlemen's right. Okay. So bringing no bringing the helicopter in, um, it's kind of funny. so the two paramedics ended up getting on Enosburg's ambulance. Yep. And so he was transported. And he was transported, and I had thirty seconds of excitement because the pilot said, "I don't think I can make it back. I don't weigh enough. Would you ride with me?" Oh, well, gee. Ah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. 
And uh, so I just like looked through things and gathered up stuff and he's got a whole checklist and an iPad and he goes through it all and he said, I think I'm okay. And I said, well, think in helicopter really aren't two words that should be in the same sentence. So I'm more than glad to give you a hand. And it went well, he got home. I didn't have to go, unfortunately. So, uh, no, working with those is... Wow, I didn't realize you're such a weak. No, me either. That was going to be too heavy or something I hear all the time, burn off fuel. Um, so, usually when we bring a helicopter in, and I don't follow the Facebook social media much at all, but it usually sparks, is it Forum, Bakersfield? Forum? Yeah, that went crazy. Usually does. Um, I had an individual say, well, what the hell do you need to go over three or four times for it? Well, here's how it works. Three minutes out, I'm on the radio with and I give him the coordinates where he's learning. He's been at the school enough that I don't have to give him anymore. He does a high flight, right. just drive by. Mm -hmm. What's the place look like? Drops down on one level, that's to blow everything out of the way. And make sure there's nothing. And then once he does that, that's when I clear the scene. Everybody's back, everybody out of the way, you can touch the down. And he doesn't touch down until I give him the get go to it. So, and it, Do you put lights up? No, no lights. No lights. They don't want any lights, they're all infrared. I oh. put four road cones up on the perimeter of where I am. And you know, I read him off northwest, southeast. You know, what's there? I've got a softball goalie. I've got a tree with a broken limb. I've got, you know, like, I, I run around the school ground and I pick that up quickly. The garbage cans they have to push over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always find shirts, socks things of that nature, tree branch, and it's, hmm. yep. Wow. You should pay attention to that area more often. Than so when, you know, on the, on the Facebook forum, you know, that's why they have to do that. So occasionally there has been once where uh, they came in, what they call too heavy. You know, how they judge their fuel is based upon how they're going to get here and what their wind resistance is going to be. So if it's, Guess that their wind resistance on the way down is going to be X while the wind died down. Probably they get here a little bit quicker. It's 13 minutes from Wellington to here. Cool. That's pretty quick. So you really yeah. count some time there. Then. Yeah, so it does. It saves a lot of time. Um, oftentimes, I've seen the helicopter here before Enosburg arrives from the scene with the patient, mm -hmm. and we're not afraid to call because we can call them off. We can call them in on standby. Sometimes it will look a lot easier, mm -hmm. especially in good weather, because the helicopter resides outside of the hangar. Um, the winter time, they have to open the hangar, wheel it out, shut the hangar, fire it up, you know, sometimes de-ice it. Are they coming by the rugby field right there? Is that where they're... I'm not sure what their flight... They always come from, well, I suppose, Kitty Corner 36. So when I walk them in, it's always from that way. So, it, it's, it, it, we've, we've kind of strategically got some places, um, Vegas is pretty tight, so I don't, I wouldn't really foresee us landing outside of the school. The school works really, really well. Yeah. Um, I suppose we, we do have some sites down my way on my farm, we've got some picked up sites. Um, obviously. You know, where they land remotely, such as like leeches, Jarvis's, things of like that. Even yeah. even Jarvis's, we can get here equally as fast. Mm -hmm. You know, this is has worked so well. You know, you can take a cornfield or a grass field, for example, and the unknown obstacles and power wires and things of like that could actually slow it down enough for the ride here and the English might get a bit quicker. Yeah. So, but it's a, it's a great tool. It's it's a great tool for kind of down to have. Yeah, considering we never did. So I think this is it. And probably marks the milestone of my longest slip or many other. Thanks for coming out. So I will collaboratively get with the fire department. We'll drop down some stuff on yep. the remote access. Um, it may not be for we, a couple We of just want to make sure that we know what your specific yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, specific concerns are. And I think some of it is, and I may confer with you a little bit on this. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's important that this is a collaborative effort and not us just saying we want X and that's that. Yeah, great. I want, I want to make sure everybody's happy and connected. So, very good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. I'll send you this tonight. Yeah. See ya. Thank you. See ya. See you tomorrow. Okay. Very good. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs>
Is it my turn? Oh, no, this is no. He's got a skinny yeah. white wire running down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. What? This is the contract for the $8,000 for the inventory from Bethany. We do that. It needs to be signed. This is for Catherine to sign. I believe the town bakers should have signed there. You want to read that over? This is the official. This is the official what? This is the official declaration to go ahead with the paving grant from the state. The state agency transportation will sign here, blah, 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 and the town is over here to go ahead with the grant. So those are two things that should be signed. Those two. Do you uh, have any comments on uh, the Hathaway Road access, man? So it's the final. I don't believe there's any problem, but I mean, that's what I'm asking. Finalized it. No, we'll do a preliminary, then we do a final. Yeah, we do a final. Oh. Sign, sign form to do the permit, to do the work, right. which is already done. And then after the work is done, then you finalize it. And, and it, then he's supposed to be able to get a permit. So, uh, I asked Maria today about PJ's, the guy that won't explode sides that he talked about last year. He's not interested. So I have a guy that's texting me right now. Yep. Um, we open, can we open this? He got till, he's, he got till the 4th, but you know, I don't meet till, what, the next? He says he got my number from Granger Highline. And he wants to know, he says, I'm interested in providing pricing for the project of a few pieces of equipment, a few pieces of equipment for this kind of work. Has the town issued an RFP? 
Matt, you question. want this or you want to? Request for proposal, an RFP. Is that what you said? stays here. Request, request for proposal. proposal. You're right. That's what I wanted to request, ask. RFPs, request for proposals. Or so RFP it ends July 4th? I think that's what they you guys It was forgot. published two weeks in the county courier. And I believe it was. And I mean, one says July 1st and one says July 4th. Oh, so Eric, huh? I have another one here. So yeah, there would be at least two if you had one there. You said BJ is not interested? He said, he said the guy doesn't have enough time. Okay. So, uh, yeah. right. um, I had to ask Maria today because I want to make sure if he was interested to get it in in time. Did you guys go over this last week? I didn't see it. Um, we have, sorry, are you finished? This, this guy's year? from Westford. Okay. How's the fuel doing? Do I dare ask? I, I don't think it's been terrible. Matt, I got a question on that with the respect of the roadside mowing. Yeah. If there were property owners that wanted to opt out of mowing, um, that for were the second pass type thing? Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, I think I'll look, like the power company, I believe, if you don't want them to spray or something like that, you just mark it off and yeah, should they notify us? Uh, they ready? should notify somebody here, and then make more township. Yeah. And when it, when it is going to be happening, we can say to the guy, "Okay, this guy doesn't want to." Yeah, I do have a question about that, though, and that is seeing how that the uh, the growth sometimes impedes the surface of the driving for the road. Will they be responsible for cutting that then themselves? Because I mean, like, I, I, there's a lot of stuff hanging over. If they don't want to cut, you mean? Yeah. I would assume so. They have to maintain the edge of their road. <laughs> you don't get you don't get a say, do you? I don't believe they have right. a say. Uh, you we have a right away. This is it's a three round right, right away. It's a fifty foot. It's the same path. with the power company. Yeah. But don't can't bother getting that spray. You can say no to spray, right? I believe. Do to I spraying, but not for trimming. Not for trimming. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So it's a So twenty five feet either side of the center line of the road. Is the town's responsibility. Yeah. I can't remember how many feet it is of the power line on each side. Not far enough. A lot wider in the road. What's what's the link for this guy to uh I asked him if there was any questions he wanted me to ask. He's out of Westford. He told me it was due by July 4th. He said um, just a link for the RF. The RFP, RFP. Mm -hmm. and I will take a look. So, did did we do an official request for proposals for this, or did we just put it up? I think we carry it off a bit, though. Yeah. I mean, you, you're asking how much he, we expect him to do, or? No, he was asking where the link is to do the RFP. Oh. Uh, so a larger. Was there a link, or was no, or is he no. just gonna? Is he just email it to the select? Well, right. you can email it or send it. Does it add to what we're looking for? I believe it does. Kathy. Yeah. Did yeah. you find me? Yes. I mean, there's a picture of one of them on the. Um, <clears throat> well, so for, out. for those who don't really get the look at it, exactly what all the time for. Yeah. 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 One, one conversation at a time, please. So, in an RFP, it's generally a number of questions that you're asking the, the person who's putting in the, the yeah. proposal, right? And it's usually, you know, this is what we're looking for, how you're going to deliver it, you know, timelines, things like that. Yeah. Um, and it's usually much more in depth. My understanding, and, and I think uh, Tammy can attest to it more than I can. Was that we just put in a just a, a request for bids, which is different than an RFP process. Yeah. Yes. The other question there would be, depending upon what we see, do we ask, say, Pete's equipment who has a tractor in the long arm for rent? Do we ask them for a quote to see? I mean, you know what I mean, uh, I. The one you've got a proposal from, he wasn't sure how far out he could reach, and he was not sure how big of a tree he could reach, you know, cut. It was it sounded like, I'm not going to say what he's going to do, I don't know what he has, but 
the way he said it to me was it, it sounded like smaller brush was his, was his the, you know, small. Uh, Montgomery? Yeah. So who's doing it? Who did the first trim now? Because there is a trim out there. That's, that's, a, that's, that's us, right? That's with, also the converter with the sickle bar. Just and taking down the grass, basically, on the outside. Do we come back and clean it up, or? The other grass? Well, whatever we cut, the tree limbs or whatever that's down? Yeah, if they're sticking out, whatever you would. Okay. Just carry like right in there, right it's, you know, just, it looked nice. It was cut back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but no. Whoever is putting a bid should take a little time to come up and uh, take a peek at what we've got. He did come up. He, or he was going to come up. He was going to look at the post road because we, uh, we mentioned it at the, at the meeting a couple of weeks ago. And he said he heard heard it or saw it or read it or whatever. He was going to go up and look at it to see exactly what you were thinking they could do. Mm -hmm. And he put the video. So I'm assuming he figured he could do that kind of stuff. Because I know the day I talked to BJ down here, he said the guy that he works for has a tractor big enough that he can reach out there and he could take the, you know, inch, two inch, maybe three inch off his off. You know what I mean? He was capable of taking that stuff down. I know it's a lot more expensive, but I like the looks of the hand on the job. Oh, yeah. A lot Absolutely. better. I, I think it's honestly, um, <laughs> these brush hogs on a hydraulic arm yeah. uh, are pretty ragged they would, and they leave dangerous. They would be nice. Sharp. On places that are pre cut, I'll say. You know yes. what I mean? We cut it, it starts coming up the thumb size, and you can take it down to the base of yes. the that way. I mean, that's, that's a lot cool. of people are trying to use that equipment on trees that are yeah. too large. Yeah. The ones on, the, on that section of the post road, I don't think are, they're, you know, they're just all there. So just, yeah. Ter Terry, to, to that gentleman's point, I would tell him it's not an RFP we have out, we have a request for bids. I sent. Him, the ad. Okay. And I just said, this is how it was advertised. Apparently, there isn't a link. You just need to send in your RFP. And then I said, does this help you? Would, would you encourage him to come take a look at it for himself? Yeah. Sure. I, I think and that, all would, that It says call Matt. And that would answer a lot of his oh, questions. Matt, Matt could tell him. I, I think looking at it Certainly. Help. would help. I mean, if they say I can't do this section, okay, then we wouldn't have them do that section, you know, but there are sections that are going to be able to do no problem. It's agreed. Well, I want to know how come <laughs> the sickle bike, like it leaves like that much well, if you got close a, to the road. If you've got a ridge on the edge of the road, <laughs> it's kind of hard to like, Do they come back and redo that? Or? Oh, we definitely, definitely can. Lots, lots of times, Terry, the reason for that is just for real straight, that straight, to us? Yeah, uh, is straight visibility. Because when the grass is six feet high, and it is in a lot of areas, you can't see what you're cutting until you knock it down one time. Yeah. So it might be beneficial to go back a second time. That's what I wondered if we go back a second time. Yeah, I mean, seeing as how the town owns it, I mean, it's, it's something that can be done. You know, it's not a. It's not a one time get it done and get out of there deal if, if you need be. I did talk to a gentleman from Hutchins today about the blacktop. He's going to start the proposal. Excuse me. For the post show, I've talked to Pike and I've got a couple other calls in that have not been answered yet. But Why are they paving the school? Any idea? I haven't heard a thing from there. I know Pike, I think Pike got the bid to go from the quick stop down towards Hyde's Hill. They're in the shin that one, that little section there. And they can work with that. I haven't seen this yet. I can't, can't get any worse. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I can stick in the letters to town. Terry? Terry's a nice resignation. Would you pass those up here? Huh? Mr. West would like to look at some. For what? Resignation for what? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Sorry. Sorry, Lance. I was, so those are just like trying to figure out what to do with those. No, no, I don't. I just think uh, what John doesn't have a chance, chance to look at it. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Matt, nice job on the uh, Brigham. I think it looks good. Uh, yeah. yeah. We ended up getting a different lift. The jigs that had you got around it? The one that he sent up, the self propelled one, they took it back to work on it and it went 
four or five days without hearing from them. So I called them up, Dr. Maria, and she said, we've got this other lift, but it's going to be rented tomorrow. And it's out for two more days. It basically, it's going to be a no-go for that. And then I said, well, what about today? And she said, well, if you can have it back by tomorrow morning, you can have it. So we ran over, picked it up. And I'll tell you what, that was a totally different beast. I mean, it was easy to control that one, fast and slow. It wasn't hurt too jerky. And yeah. Yeah, it's some of the OSB on the backside we did not replace. We put some plywood over it because it was nailed in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what was there as far as doors and windows. There's none. We couldn't, we couldn't sink screws into it for some reason. Mm -hmm. the, Let's see, no, we did that door. I think and I got might need a couple more signs on there, but I think I think there's enough signs there to get the point across. You can see that very much tomorrow, so you can see that. Keep out. Keep out. Don't, don't need to be in here anymore. On that note, uh, we, what's circulating around there are a bunch of uh, apology notes from some of the individuals who were responsible for the damage, as well as a check uh, for $1,000 written to the town of Bakersfield from the Pierce, Terry Garron and Daniel Pierce, which is very much appreciated. That's very nice of them. Yes. A check from Terry DeRoe. Terry DeRoe and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I get it backwards. Danielle. Terry I get it backwards. It's, it's Terry DeRoe and Danielle here. So they, uh, they mentioned they were sending a check on, I believe, the Bakersfield Community Forum at one point. And that's for what? We're going to the, the help of the repairs to bring them. Matt, oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. From on the Egypt side of the avenue. Have we put signs up yet? Yep. No four wheelers? Yep. Okay. I thought you had said that it's on before. Both side, it's on both sides, both ends of the post road and the beginning of the avenue. Okay. I knew I the beginning. Cabin, cabin line, sorry. I knew in the beginning of the avenue we did have. Yeah. But somebody had complained about somebody going down. And you, then yeah. somebody else said, well, they didn't think there was any. Yeah. I said, well, I'll check with Mac. There is I'm sign. pretty sure we have put signs out there now. Yeah. So, okay. Right. So, I have yeah. an ATV question from somebody. This is an out of town. Vincent Zaccarelli wanted to know if there was permission to travel on 108 to get to the Jolly for gas with an ATV. We know. can't give permission. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, a, it's now, a state road. They have, to, they have to have the appropriate license plate and it has to be just like a car. It's got to be registered. No, you can't anyway. They won't, police you still won't can't be on the state anyway. highway, even if you're registered, insured, yeah. the whole nine yards. Yeah. But uh, they, they do seem to travel quite a bit, though. Yeah, they're up I don't there. think I would worry too much about it, but. Wasn't yeah. there permission given? Or was it from the. It was from the. It was, from it was only. It was generally given, you know, wow. Well, because it's. Basically right, right there. across the road to get to the store. Gotcha. Yeah. The interesting thing, I think, is but that, you know. The gas. The nine, 10, 12 year olds driving the ATVs huh. all yeah. the way to the, yeah. to the market. But I will say that. On two wheels. <laughs> no, I'll say yeah. this from where I sit, it's, it's been a different year. It's been there, there's not the two, two wheels going down. It's the bigger four wheelers, they're going, I majority are going slow, mm -hmm. respectful, quiet. I mean, it's it's been good. That was good. my comment because somebody said, that we would keep it up with this permitting. I mean, and I said, actually, we've opened up more roads yeah. and we've had, in the last two years, less complaints yeah. and people are riding very respectful. And maybe it's just because there's no kids of the right age right now that are going. Maybe. Huh. Well, but that's possible. It's been. It has been a lot, I think, a lot better. Me too. We I haven't mean, heard any complaints it's, with it's anyone, really. Nothing on the weekend to see 7,500 machines going up and down. But they got out in the quick stop, they get gas, they get something to snack on. Yeah. And away they go. Yeah. You know, out. Gas. And I'm not hearing many at night. No. Every now and then, right around 10-ish, a group will go by. 
must be heading home, but I'm not here in the 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. So. Okay, excellent. Okay, so we've had a great update. You've got that pretty well buttoned up. Uh, I've got one last piece of mail here from Sonia Peck. Uh, Sonia Peck says, Dear Select Board, please accept my resignation from the position of cleaner. I will continue to work until the position is filled. I'm very grateful for the many years of employment, but it's now time to spend more time at home. Sincerely, <laughs> sincerely, Sonia. So, uh, we need to advertise for a cleaning position, please. Can you tell me a little detail on that in the paper? Why did you want to I think I know somebody that will. at least the county courier. Uh, and uh, we need to advertise it. It's a town. Is it two hours a week? Three. Three hours a week? Yeah. All in one day or yeah, Thursdays, that's what she's been doing. Thursdays, three hours. So if you could advertise that, please. Yeah. We'll do our due diligence and post it. And Terry, if you've got someone, have them fill out an application, fill out, or come see us and uh, for an interview. And she'll be duly considered, or she, he, don't know, duly considered, hey. along with whoever else may or may not apply. And I don't think as a restriction to strictly Thursday, is there, Tammy, they could do Thursday? I don't think so. I think they could do Thursday, Friday, just, yeah. they saw that they're doing because she Kathy's did. not here, and then, yeah. you know, it's clean till Monday, and everybody's happy. Right. So I think at any time during the week. But like cleaning or, while they're here, right? She, no. Oh, she cleans after, after hours? hours? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. Hours. So you could do Thursday after 12. Do we get the yeah. uh, summer or, or whatever to clean in here Friday. since we use this space? Yeah. If it's oh, we have a calculator pieces. We'll leave that all over on the floor. How did those get? I have no idea. It could, we could use an occasional sweeping. Uh -huh. Once a month, Charlie. Yeah, I'd say, you know, there's just some stuff on the floor that's been here for a long time now that would be better if we just swept it up. Yeah, I, I think the work is confined yeah, for me. Yeah, out there is where they clean it. Yeah. Well, it's outside. Well, you could have them yeah. advertise, yeah. Have them. advertise that we clean this room once a month. Right. Please. Oh. Just because we use the space now. The... Yeah, right. We use the space now more than it was before. Right. Yeah. I think they used to pay her prior to maybe elections and elections. So once a month, bigger. Yeah. 20 bucks an hour. Um, okay. That was it. Um, there's no new news on uh, the ongoing project uh, for the, uh, the grant for Brigham. Okay. Uh, do we have any mail? I uh, read it. That was Sonia. So, oh, oh. And then oh, there's a. Yeah, then there's a bid from Mike Montgomery for the roadside. We'll open the uh, so right. Yeah. 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 Um, East Bakersfield Culvert Project. Um, Mr. Bersetti is uh, promising update. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I do know the, that uh, they the did hire Tyler Billingsley. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as the engineer uh, for a, uh, an estimate. Uh, other than that, I don't know any more either. Uh, external audit, any more new information on that? Um, the one that I left off got back to me and they won't be putting in a bit. Okay. Who was that? KBS. Uh, any new information on the Busca Plow build update? I'm going to wait for FEMA for that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Furnaces. Any news on the furnace? It's going to hold. Okay. Is there anything else anyone wants to bring up? Yes. So, you mentioned that you had a meeting this morning. What was the meeting this morning? Mac and I had a FEMA meeting this morning. Oh. What could you say to Lindsay, the meeting we had this morning? I had it. Yes. We did discuss 
What was it we were talking about? Drawing a blank. Okay. What was the subject? <laughs> Lindsay's subdivision. Uh, Lindsay's whatever they were trying to do. Oh, I was being informed as of what was going on. Oh. That's all. Okay. I was being given information by this select board secretary as gotcha. to what was going on. Gotcha. Okay. Second, can we get some flowers to Charmaine Pocket's uh, family from the town of Bakersfield? Absolutely. Does that. That's good. Flowers um, or, or a check? Something, something's in the works, and this is for all you guys to sign. Okay, card. Uh, I believe there'll be the check on in here or flowers. Oh, the cap is Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, okay. I have three. Yeah, I know, but you weren't here last week. I had none. I mean, huh. so happy. So. It was, it was amazing, man. And, and I'll tell you, two of them pony off of, 2.5 probably pony off of Linda. So, Linda, are you still with us? <laughs> no? I am. All right, so, okay, slow here down. we go. Slow down. So, the first one is... Uh, Linda sent an email to all of us regarding uh, the uh, monument and an engraving update on there for uh, one of the soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see it on the agenda. I didn't know what the normal protocol is. So, you know, I'm fairly new, but I wanted to make sure that we brought that up uh, so everyone was aware in case you didn't see the email. Um, Linda, what was that family name again? I'm sorry. So. Right, and, and he actively served, if I read correctly? You have a copy of the CD-214, yes. Yeah, I was surprised you said that, but yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know Well, what I don't know what you're requiring for often, you know, to authenticate somebody's eligibility to put be put on the monument. And I don't know if the select board does it or the cemetery commission does it, who's responsible for keeping those up to date and where you're getting the information from. But that is the official document that tells you that uh, Bakersfield was his home of record when he entered active duty. Linda, I, I apologize because I don't know the answer to that. Uh, we'll have to research as to who has taken care of getting the names on the monument in the past. Yes, I could probably dig through my mother's stuff from way back when, but uh, there's been a lot of names entered since then, and I'm sure there's some kind of criteria required. Well, that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I obviously didn't know the answer to it, and I wasn't sure if everyone had seen her email. Yes. All right, so... Um, I guess we have to do a little research on that, Linda. Okay, thank you. Um, second one um, regarding building grants. Linda, did you have an opportunity to check into that, uh, that uh, Vermont cities and leads of towns and cities? Did I have not thoroughly because uh, I have my hands full. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot of stuff on your plate. I, I know that. Uh, but I did want to, especially besides the Historical Society, which potentially, if you could somehow parlay a project this year and you could get a little bit of funding from it. But I was Oh, I thought you were talking about the uh, Hearst House. And that is exactly what I initially had sent over for, was the Hearst House, because that one is an active project that would happen in, in 23. So it would happen in 2023 20, time frame. Um, and I thought that would be great to try to get some funding uh, and some grants from that. So back up, what are you even talking about? So there was a whole <laughs> set of emails that came out from the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns. And one of them, I get them, oh my God, I get like three a week or more. Uh, and one of them was for grants for repairing buildings. Linda's one concern, the two concerns, one is the Historical Society and, and trying to get that sum of funded some of that money. There was, uh, I watched the videos for it, and someone was talking about what if I spent money in the prior year, but the project is still ongoing type thing. And they said, you know, it's like a as come as need basis, you could possibly justify that. But more importantly, was her second point 
at one of our, like two meetings ago with the Hearst House that needs, needs repairs, and she was talking about potentially using COVID funds, the, the COVID funds, to try to cover it. Well, this would cover, this grant would help cover some, if not potentially all, but the matching part uh, needed to fix that house. Or the Hearst, the Hearst house. Yes. So I was just trying to give her alternate funding sources. Uh, okay. I was just curious if she had gone through it yet. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. My third one also came from Vermont City's Leagues and Towns. I don't know if anyone received it, but they're putting out now a thing right where it says um, they have a program and they were reaching out to find out if you know, towns wanted to do it. They're giving away COVID tests for the town buildings. So, I mean, I know, you know, some you know, folks are relaxing and all, but if this thing rears its head again, we could have COVID tests here so you could test, you know, somebody if you thought they may have COVID right away and get them out of the building or whatever. This was VLCT? VLCT. That has so much stuff coming out all the time. You're overwhelmed by it if you if you yeah. ever email. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too, John. Um, was there a maximum or a minimum number that we could put in the safe someplace? It, it didn't, I didn't run the program. I saw the email. I haven't, my auditors are in coming in and in this next couple of weeks, so I've been focusing on the day job and getting trying to pay for my audits, but I saw the emails. Do you, Did you happen to ask what the expiration date was on? Same question. On um, those, because uh, the last ones that came through the Postal Service expire in August. You know, I didn't even look at those. I, I didn't look at a date, but thank you. I'll have to look at that, because I have a bunch of them. I've got it open now, John. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't even think about looking at the expiration date. They said positive, so. <laughs> I guess I'll have to look at the rest of them, though. <laughs> so they're looking to give the, to have some here at the town clerk's office? You can yes. store them here. Yeah, you can, you can send some down to the, down the Mac, too down at the, the building down there in case one of these guys don't feel good, they can pop a COVID test real fast down there and not even have to potentially come here, come here and cause a secondary spike in a different building. If we get enough, we might it uh, says, drop some uh, off at the fire department. So right. Four test kits per person, eight tests total. <coughs> so if we named everybody, we got everybody's name, and thank, thank them until their expiration date. I think that would be good to do. We could certainly share them out. Yeah. How many people are in the fire department, man? Not a couple. Okay. Maybe we can get that tomorrow, John, get their names and how yeah. we're going to apply for uh, kit for them. Kits, yeah. They may already have them. I think it's a good idea. They may have get as many as we can. Yeah. They expire, they'll be on site and yeah. if we need them. Yeah. Never know. I'm hoping to have them. Cool, call them. They're still getting them out there, too. There's an application. Did it, John? That that was my three. Thank you. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I would second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded it? Friend up. Mm -hmm.